These two parts come with the purchase of the torch. This is a ferrule and this is a tightening bolt. When fastening the wire guide to the torch, make sure the ferrule is on tightly. Position the torch at the degree that it will weld. Put the wire guide up into the torch, tighten it, and hold it up there as far as it will go the whole time. The bolt is already on there, so put the wire guide up into the part and make sure to bottom it out all the way. If not, the ferrule will get messed up, it won't tighten down, and it will end up smashing the wire guide. Use a 7 16 wrench. Don't use a crescent wrench because it may mess up the ferrule. These are the bending tools. There are two of them included with the torch. Here, the wire guide is positioned at a 90 degree angle from the tungsten. This makes it easier to bend the parts the right way. Also use a 1 16 wire. Stick it into the wire guide and clip it off just a little bit. By putting that in there, it saves the hole and keeps it open the right amount during bending. While tightening, use the bender to hold the wire guide so that it can be fairly tight. That way, while it's being bent, it won't move very much. The first bender has pressure put on it in a downward direction, just to protect the nut. All of the actual bending is done with the other bender. This is the most comfortable position for holding your hands while bending. The goal is to have a little bit of a V-shape, so don't put them in line because that will make this more difficult. Separate your hands a little bit and apply a little pressure. Put the top bender where the other one was previously, or where the bend is, and that way you won't be bending it there any longer. Then move down. It's important to keep bending it until you get past the cup. Once past the cup, try not to have a lot of bend in one spot. Make a smooth transition out. Either start bending here or start at the top. However, if you start at the top, it will be necessary to cut some of the wire guide off because it will be too long. Now the benders go in the back like this, so move toward the front. Any way that the benders are positioned, that's which way the wire guide will go. So make sure to position them in the direction that is needed for the wire guide to move and bend. them a quarter inch apart. Again, the top one is used to protect the nut. Go opposite and pull down on the bottom one. This one is a little bit high, so we're going to redo it a little bit. If it's necessary to undo a bend, just position the benders around the most bent spot of the guide and squeeze them together ever so slightly. It doesn't take a lot of pressure to undo some of the bend. The wire guide is touching the cup, but it shouldn't be pushing against it with any pressure. It is just there to steady it so that it doesn't move. After that, take the piece of wire out. If using 045 wire, the wire will not go into the guide, so you'll have to take the wire guide off and run some wire down. If it is difficult to get the wire into the guide, one trick is to put a little bend into the wire and then clip it off from the side. This way there is not a sharp point up and down. All that is left is a little bit of bent wire on the end, 
and that will allow the wire to go into the guide a lot more easily. It may be necessary to add a little push with the cutters, and that's okay as long as the wire doesn't break off into the guide. Here the wire guide is being bent a little bit more using the bender. Run some wire down until the wire straightens out. Clip it off because the weight of the wire will hinder this process while figuring out where the position of the wire is to the tungsten. Find where the guide is the straightest and bend it there. Notice that there is a big gap, so here the gap is being closed a little. Take a 1 8 tungsten and check the gap. If it's a little too tight, find the most bent spot and unbend it there. It won't take very much pressure. Every time the guide is bent, the wire is also bent. So run the wire down until it's straight and don't be afraid to waste wire. If this is done right the first time, then it won't be necessary to change it while welding is taking place. Next, look at it from the side and line it up from the front side of the cup with the back side at eye level. If it is viewed the same way every time, then it's possible to look at the tungsten from the same way each time. Here it looks a little high, so the wire will be moved down a little bit. If welding horizontally in a bore with an upward progression, the wire needs to be below the tungsten so that the puddle will flow up. If the torch is straight up and down, then the wire should be right in the middle of the tungsten. If the torch has a little bit of an angle for a face or a ring groove, then the wire might need to be on the top side or the outside of the tungsten so that the puddle flows the opposite direction of the way that the tungsten is pointing. The end of the wire guide should always be in the same place. Part of what affects how many amps are needed for the hot wire is the distance from the wire guide to the tungsten. So if needed, mark the spot where the wire guide lines up even to the end of the cup and cut it off using a bandsaw. This way the amperage is always the same for the hot wire. Thank you for going through wire guide setup with Arc Specialties.